from Pierce Gift It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Shut your goddamn mouth. I'm trying to listen to Tom Likas. Bitch. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, Father's Day is a big day on the Tom Likas show. Not because I want you to be a parent, I don't. I think you boys should delay parenthood as long as possible, up to including death. I've been pushing it off till death. And I say until death because there are women who will uh, get a syringe and they'll take the sperm from you after you're dead to have your baby. You have no control over it at that point. (laughs) But uh, the reason Father's Day is important is because many of you have been denied access to your father. We have uh, talked on the program about how your mom, if she's divorced, has probably told you your dad is a jerk, your dad is a pig, your dad is a creep, your dad is an a-hole, your dad is a deadbeat. And uh, I've been telling you not to listen to what your mother says, but to find out who your dad really is. And find out what it was about your dad that made your mom want to rip her clothes off and have sex with him without birth control so she could give birth to you. No matter how much of a jerk or hit, make the connection this year on Father's Day, boys. Make the connection. Your dad is a jerk. The kind of jerk your mom likes to bang. You need to be more like him. Chicks would bang you, too, if you knew what your dad knows. Just imagine, you'll never be able to meet a woman like your mom if that's what you want. A lot of guys want to meet somebody like their mom. How would you ever meet somebody like your mom if your mom has told you not to go out with the kind of men that she went out with? Not not to be the kind of man that she went out with. How would you How would you ever meet a woman like your mom if your mom told you, don't go, don't be like your dad? <laughs> because your mom likes people like your dad. Oh, yeah. Now she feels like a victim. But your dad knows something that you need to find out. And I'm not kidding about this. We've gotten calls from, from men thanking me for reuniting them with their parents, specifically with their fathers. Very important. And Father's Day is the time to do it. Father's Day, a very important day around here. If your dad was around, he'd have kicked your ass. You'd be more of a man. You'd be less of a puss. You are a puss. And now this story from the Associated Press about Father's Day. I want to read it to you right now. Says here, fathers sleep a lot, and they snore loudly. When they're awake, they like to fish or golf, but they're comically bad at both. They drink so much beer, they're practically alcoholics. And they're complete couch potatoes, always watching television and hogging the remote. At least... That's the less than favorable image of dad on Father's Day greeting cards. It's a striking contrast to the poetic praise often expressed at Mother's Day. Many men now, 
thank goodness. Many men say they are tired of the put-down cards and would like some affirmation for a change. And at least one greeting card company is listening. One father in Washington, D. But imagine if they had Mother's Day cards. Mom eats like a pig, dresses like a slob, cuts her hair like a lesbian, sits at Starbucks all day, chit-chatting with her friends, spends more on manicures and pedicures than she spends on groceries. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> they wouldn't dare put out cards like that. Maybe I should do it. <laughs> I got friends who can draw. <laughs> draw some nice pictures of half eaten Cinnabons to put on the Mother's Day card. <laughs> My mom has Cinnabons. Happy Mother's Day. Not to the dishes and iron my shirt. <laughs> yes, yes. It says here, one father in Washington, D.C., who used to stay home with his kids and blog about his life as an at-home father, says the golf and fishing cards don't bother him, but he doesn't like the ones that make dads look incompetent. Right on. Brian Reed, a father of two, said this idea that men are somehow biologically incapable of caring for their children is the sort of thing that I don't find particularly funny. Not only greeting cards, but television and movies often convey the idea that dad is unreliable with every parental duty, be it changing a diaper or picking the kids up at school, he says. Greeting cards can be a good litmus test for the way society perceives various relationships and people. Companies want to sell cards, so they aim to hit a spark of truth. But generalizing in order to reach people can lead to stereotypes that then get perpetuated and take a life of their own. In an age where about 159,000 dads stay home with their children, According to 2006 U.S. Census numbers, it's hardly accurate to say that dads don't know what they're doing. One Hallmark card at a stop and shop this season showed a cartoon depiction called When Dads Pack Lunches. In the picture, some kids are eating lunch together and one says, looks like I got a peanut butter and salami sandwich and a can of WD-40. There you go, the stereotypical incompetent and tool-obsessed father. But our culture may be heading away from that and offering credit to both units in the parental pack. Hallmark says it is offering more positive cards this year. Spokeswoman Deidre Parks, this is for Hallmark, said men have told us they would like to feel a little more appreciated. That doesn't mean you can't give your dad a funny Father's Day card, but it can be maybe complimentary humor rather than a negative card. Reed calls making fun of incompetent fathers, quote, this comic idea that's run its course. He mentioned a 2005 NBC show that bombed called Meet Mr. Mom. The reality series depicted how a family dealt with the mother going away when the father is left alone with the children. Reed said it doesn't work, but it didn't work because it wasn't particularly funny, extraordinary, or otherwise television worthy to see dad spend time with and take care of their kids. It's nothing new these days. Men who have children are getting tired of the often negative media portrayal of fathers, some say. Roland Warren, president of the National Fatherhood Initiative, a nonpartisan not for profit group based in Gaithersburg, Maryland, said they're either dumb, dangerous, or disaffected. While absentee fatherhood is still a very large issue, the dads who are involved tend to be more committed and taking a more hands-on approach than they might have experienced with their own fathers growing up, Warren said. Fathers increasingly want to see the value of their role reflected in the media, he said. They have taken on more of the home care and child care as more women have joined the workforce. So their contribution at home takes on greater weight in their minds. Is it so much to ask for a flattering card? 
Indeed, the greeting card industry might be getting the hint. A recent trip down a greeting card aisle found one reporter hard-pressed to find many insulting Father's Day cards. Sure, there was the one that said, Celebrate Father's Day with a beer in one hand and a beer in the other hand. And there are at least two that implied Dad is married to the remote control. But other than the small handful of put-down cards, most Father's Day greetings were thoughtful, appreciative, and often quite mushy. I love you just like I did when I was little. Only now I appreciate you even more, reads one. Another new Hallmark card with Greedy and Chris Rock carries the greeting. Nobody ever says, hey, Daddy, thanks for knocking out the rent. I sure love this hot water. It's easy to read with all this light. This Father's Day, remember? It says here, dads are people too. Choose your card wisely. A column distributed by the Associated Press. I mean, it's absolutely true. All these years, women have complained that men don't do anything around the house. And uh, now that more men are raising children than ever, there are more dads at home than ever before taking care of kids or they are the primary caretakers. You know, we still look upon men as a bunch of bumbling, stumbling fools in the society. The advertising agencies do it. TV commercials do it. Greeting cards do it. And it's the attitude of millions and millions of people that men are just a bunch of incompetent jerks who are not capable of love or not capable of nurturing or caring for anybody. Not even themselves. Does this piss you off? Tom like it. one 800 800 tom Tom, 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 Tom like it. There's so much ignorance in this world, Father. And, uh, I, I, there's so much ignorance in the world, that's how I became a multi-millionaire. <laughs> if our community ever goes up five IQ points, I'm a dead man. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Okay. All these uh, Father's Day cards, the trash dads. You think about this. This whole phenomenon that men are just being trashed. Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Um, thank you for taking my call. I'm I'm nauseous so bad because I'm so pissed off at this topic. I'm I'm so tired of people in general, especially women, carrying this notion on that men are worthless, that they don't need us, but yet they have absolutely no problem getting us to sign the dotted line so that eventually they can spread their legs for somebody else and take half of our income and stay in our house that we bought to pay for their dream of having kids and having a family that they constantly nag us about. And by the way, one thing that really pissed me off is that I heard Oprah Winfrey one time, actually several times on her show, say that the hardest job in the world is a stay-at-home mom and they don't get any respect. What about fathers that are chained to their desk and their miserable jobs to pay for that very dream of them staying home, to love their wife, to love their child. Why don't you go to the goddamn gym, stay in shape for your husband, and do your part, you goddamn bitch. <laughs> That's right. See, you are pissed. I'm goddamn pissed off at this. I wish women would get their head out of their ass. <laughs> and into mine. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thomas, uh, the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, bro. My mom um, told me a big fat lie. Um, what had happened was my dad left when I was born. And uh, the story my mom told me is when he found out, he took off because he couldn't handle it. Well, the fact is my dad left to go play college football after he broke up with my mom because uh, I guess she was a little too clean for him. So the day I was born, he gets a phone call saying, well, if I can't have you, I'll have your kid to remember you by. Really? Yeah. Well, that freaked him out. And uh, he didn't know whether to believe it or not. Well, he come to find out a couple years later it was true and uh, come to meet him on my 10th birthday. 
um, he had been in contact and, you know, been pleading to meet me, finally got the opportunity, and ever since then we've uh, established a relationship. Um, we're pretty good friends right now. Um, I'm closer to my dad now than I am to my mom. So, and uh, uh, did, was your dad able to impart stuff to you that you could have used growing up? Oh, my gosh, dude, tons, not, tons of stuff. If he was actually in my life consistently, like I know he probably wanted to be, my life would have been, uh, I would have learned a lot, a lot of lessons a lot quicker. And how do you feel about your mom now knowing that she did this? You know, I don't even think about it, dude. She moved out of state. She lives in Oregon. I, you know, I call her every once in a while, just say hello. How did she react to you developing a relationship with your dad? Oh, man, did she ever get curious? Every single time we went somewhere, every single time we took, what did you guys talk about? What did you do? What did you do? I love it. Oh, yeah. Got to love that. I'm encouraging guys to do what you did. And if dad doesn't call them, find dad. You call him. Go see oh, him. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm telling the guys to do. Yeah, my dad's a great guy. He, uh, he, he put up with a lot just, you know, coming to see me. And, uh, and I know my mom, so he put up with quite a bit. Wow. Thomas, I'm proud of you. Thank you for a great story. Hey, no problem, Tom. Thanks for uh, doing what you do. No problem at all. See, there's a lot of this. There's a lot of these feelings out there. We've tapped into something really, really visceral, something deep and important. Yeah, sure, we screw around here, and I love screwing around here, but I know just from having a dad who was married to my mom all his life and who uh, claimed our home address as his home address, just not having him around, that was hard enough. I can only imagine what happens uh, when uh, your mom and dad get divorced or they were never married or uh, your dad was one of your mom's one-night stands and then you have to spend your life hearing what a jerk your dad is. And then as a kid, you don't know what else to believe. You're, your mom is the only thing you got, so you believe it. You know, maybe she was lying. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Elena, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi. Hi. I I have to absolutely agree with the guy that was really pissed off a minute ago. Um, I grew up with my mom at home. My dad worked his butt off for us. We, you know, provided all of our summer uh, trips, you know, a roof, food. Um, I think it's awful what they're doing with these cards or any other, you know, television. It's just always putting the dad in a, in a bad light. I myself also am just recently divorced, and I think on a side subject, women are very, uh, you know, out to put the screws to the guys because their relationship didn't work out. And I think women really need to stop and separate their personal differences with the guy from, you know, taking care of their kids. Yeah, both people have a responsibility to take care of the kids. Their kids produced in a marriage or a relationship, sure, both parties should pitch in. But when I found out what I was being awarded for child support, which I do receive, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I signed a stipulation to give money back to my ex-husband because we're both, you know, living, you know, fairly over month to month, and he wouldn't have been able to survive on what, uh, you know, they would have taken out of his of his paycheck. So, yeah, was I pissed at him? Are we divorced? Sure we are, but it's not about putting the screws to him financially. We're no longer together because it didn't work out. You get a divorce. But this whole child support thing, I've just gotten such... Uh, an education on this whole thing. I think the whole system has to be revamped. Um, uh, the guy I'm seeing now, um, he is on the receiving end of this. He's a father of two um, and is barely making it, you know, month to month because they're taking, looks like, over half of his paycheck away. And it's just ridiculous. People should really look at this objectively, be fair, and something has to change with the system. If I... If I didn't give this money back to, to my ex, um, he, he'd be out on the street. I can't imagine how he'd survive. Of course, of course, for the most part, the only women who have the opinion you do are women who, after a divorce, end up dating a guy who's on the other end of the stick, 
who instead of paying you child support is a guy who's paying somebody else child support. And the result is that uh, your lifestyle with the new guy is a lot lower than it would have been if he wasn't paying so much child support. Uh, but <laughs> So well, you're, you're the only kind of woman that generally calls this show and says what you just said. Well, you know, to, to be, you know in all fairness, um, I... I you know, I'm one of the maybe few women that, you know, I don't want someone else's money. I feel so good every day when I get up. I've had the struggle in, in my adult life before being married, you know, even during our marriage and now after. I, I could certainly benefit from keeping some of this money from my ex. But you know what? I have my own little business, and I've been struggling. But you know what? I get up every morning. I drive to my business, and I know that. I did it. When I go out and buy something for myself, for my kids, or I have that satisfaction that it's my money. I, I earned this. I didn't just mooch off of someone else. And women want, you know, these equal rights, and they, and they feel that, you know, they're always getting the dirty end of the stick and so forth. And I just don't understand, and I tell my girlfriends this all the time, you know, where's your sense of, of accomplishment, your sense of, you know, I did it, you know, everybody's out there to make a living, men and women, and women should just get out there, feel good about themselves, and, you know, put in a hard day's work just like the guys do, you know, if if things don't work out in a marriage, it should not uh, all of a sudden turn to this financial, oh, now I don't need you in my life, but I need your money, it's just, you know, and the the guy I'm seeing right now, we don't live together, he has his place i've got mine our our money isn't mixed you know he has his money i have mine it's it's uh it's not one of those situations where you know i uh, all of a sudden because i see that he's uh you know a uh, a dad thing you know child support that you know i'm sympathetic to this i've i've pretty much always felt this way yeah so. well i i appreciate that um you know it's, it, it makes me very angry to see what goes on. It's one of the many reasons I've uh, voted against marriage with my feet and I have voted against having children because I don't want to be in one of those situations. I just don't. And so many people are. Yikes. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Ann on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I was calling you um, about this situation okay my brother i know is not my father's son okay and and i think my father has been how do you know that because i just i know that okay i just know that i mean yeah did somebody tell you well my mom in as much told me after my dad died i mean she didn't straight out tell me i i know okay and and my brother has... Oh, well, I'm, I'm curious. You're anonymous. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm curious about... Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. How? And I'm curious about this because I'm just curious about how these conversations take place. What exactly did your mom say? I'm sorry. What did my mom say to me? Is that what she said? Yeah. What did she say? How did she say this to you? She said that, well, and by <laughs> when my father was... Um, gone and he was in the Vietnam War, whatever, um, she said that she found she found out he had been with somebody or something. Anyways, and that she's fairly she's pretty sure that my brother isn't my father's son, but she's not totally positive, but my brother's real short and um, my dad was really tall and he, I just I but my brother does not know. Okay, and and, and I don't know and, and nobody else in the in the outer family or anybody else knows. But I think I can help my brother a lot Possibly if I told him the truth, because I think cause I think my dad always knew it, and that's why my brother has, like, weird feelings about my dad, and, you know? I mean, or would I be doing the wrong thing to, to tell him, do you think? Well, uh, would you tell your mom you're doing this? Because she'd find out. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't... I guarantee you, if you tell your brother, he's going to tell your father. Well, my father died. Oh, that's right. Your father died. I'm sorry. Oh. Well, he'll he'll probably tell somebody. He'll probably come to your mom and have an issue with it, don't you think? Well, he may, but I think it might just make him feel better since he kind of he has bad feelings towards my father. Anyways, he's kind of glad since my dad died. He never thought my dad really was good to him. You know, my sister and I adored my well, father. Well, I'm a pragmatist. 
Okay. Okay. And so, number one, it depends on how valuable your relationship is with your mother. If you value your relationship with your mother, you'll at least tell her that you're going to do this. You will not let her get uh, cold cocked by your brother. Yeah, because she's real, real like into like what other people think. So I, you know, I think well, that might be part of the reason why nothing's being said. Or maybe it would just mess up my brother more. You know, I don't know. But I, I, I would, you know, if I had a weird relationship with my dad, I would want to know that. Especially if he was dead, I would want to know that. I think that would uh, resolve some of the issues or make me realize why it felt weird or why we didn't get along or whatever. But he's going to resent your mom for this, and so therefore you would have to give her a heads up unless you don't care. I, I, I do care. I guess, yeah, I do care, though. But I, really I think what she did is disgusting, and I, I certainly have a problem with that idea. Yeah. Is your brother well, older or younger than you? He's younger than me. Right. He's, he's like 33. Do we know if, uh, if, if your father is your father? Oh, yes. I look just like my dad. So uh -huh. We're both tall like him. My brother's got like... Red hair, you know. I, or, it's, it's very, it's obvious. I mean, it's, it's, you know, he's never really fit in. And the whole look, I mean, my dad was like six feet. He's like five four. You know, I'm um, just, it's just really obvious. Really, my God, yeah. who did your mom boff? Um, I, I think was, was your mom dating Danny Bonaduce? No. <laughs> But I think it was her boss because she secretly went to work when my dad was like uh, out in the war in Vietnam, you know. And it's just, it's... And we're losing the call, but I, I'm just imagining her mom dating Danny Bonaduce. Tom Likas, I have no complaints. She was wild and crazy. Didn't she wouldn't say no to anything because really? she was married like a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Like His Show. It's the Tom Like His Show coming to you from Hollywood at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. <laughs> We're talking about uh, what started off with these uh, Father's Day cards that are demeaning to men. And then we moved on to that general topic of how men are demeaned. It's one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. It's Elizabeth on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I love your show. I listen to you every day at work. Thank you. And um, it's... I'm calling regarding um, the topic you're talking about. Cause well, that's good, because if you weren't, I wouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> you're awesome, and uh, I love your show. I, I tell everyone about you. <laughs> good. And, uh, yeah, it's regarding, like, on Friday I found out my baby's dad has someone else, and he lied to me. He was leading me on. Anyways, I just reacted, like, because I helped him look for a job. I would lend him my car. I would give him money. And the truth came out, and I told him, I don't want nothing about you. But you already knew he was a loser. Yeah. yeah so if right. you knew he was yeah. a loser, can I ask you a question? I know you're a big fan. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Why did you have a baby with a loser? I know. Because, well, every when, oh, anyway. If you have to lend a man money, mm -hmm. that's not the father of your child. Mm -hmm. If a man doesn't have a job, mm -hmm. that's not the father of your child. Uh -huh. If a man is abusive, mm -hmm. that's not the father of your child. Yeah. I mean, isn't that stuff obvious? Yes. <laughs> oh, it is? I learned the hard way. <laughs> well, that's what I'm the trying to tell the girls like right now. Always, girls were always like in denial. You think the guy is going to change. They change temporarily. And he, I mean, I should have known since the first time when, when I was 21 and left everything for him. Then he cheated. Once a person cheats, they're always going to cheat. Well, and you never take them back, and it's my fault. And the first time with that, but darling, it, the fact that he che he did your favor. Yeah, he did. I mean, yeah, you know what? I'm happy that glad because I, I I hate him. I don't want to know nothing about him. 
and I'm glad. He got with the girl that just came out of jail. He told me because the girl started telling me stuff. I'm like, I'm not going to fight over a guy. You could have him. She was like, oh, don't mess with her because she just came out of jail. I don't care if she did. And I go, I don't, and everybody tells me, oh, you should get him for child support. I'm like, I don't want his money. I don't want nothing to do with him, especially because then I don't even want him. To How would you get child money. support out of him? You had to let him on my own, and I'm going to raise my son on own, and I don't want nothing with him. I don't even want my son to have his last name. Like, I want to take his last name out of my son because I feel like he doesn't, my son doesn't deserve to carry his, I feel like he's a sperm donor. Like, he's not, I mean, he drinks, he smokes, like, he just thinks about him. Yeah, but you thought that was all wonderful when you were dating. Uh, when I was, it was different when we were No, dating. no, it was different because he hadn't cheated on you yet. Yeah. And so you thought all this stuff was perfectly okay back then. And I would tell him, like, tell me if you're being with someone else. You know, I feel you are. He's like, no, you're crazy. You're well, jealous. who admits you're that? I mean, wait a minute. Who admits that? Huh? Who admits that? Nobody. <laughs> oh, that's right. Donna, you had to... enough information yeah. to know this guy should not have been the father of a child. Mm -hmm. Not your child. He's 11 months, my son. Why'd you do that? Your show. I couldn't listen to your show. I used to get so mad. Why couldn't you listen to my show? He used to change my station. When oh, we were in the I'll bet park. he did, because if you called me uh, 20 months ago when mm -hmm. you were busy procreating, yeah. I would have told you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. I should have. Now I have a son. I, I feel strong, and uh, I'm glad that happened. But and do you know how much harder it is, it is. to it is succeed? Hard. You have to work two jobs. Well, that's my point. Yeah. Wouldn't it have been easier to wait until you found a responsible yes, person yes. and have a baby then? Yes. Now you have to struggle harder. Exactly. Now you're going to live in poverty, mm -hmm. which you do, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. How much do you make? Oh, I don't want to. It's embarrassing. Eight dollars an hour, right? No, no, no. Well, I have two jobs. One, I do um, me medical billing. I mean, it's not, of course, it's poverty. It's like ten, ten fifty-four. And then Saturdays and Sundays, I work in Burger King, which is, which is eight dollars an hour. Yeah. And how many hours? Um, I work with the one from Monday to Friday. It's full time, and Saturday and Sunday, it's from six to seven hours. So you make uh. Fifty six dollars on Saturday. Well, I probably yeah, my, like in income, monthly income, I only bring like uh, fourteen hundred, like one thousand four hundred and forty after taxes. Yeah. Right. And so I have like health insurance and all. So that. you make about two thousand dollars a month, or about twenty four thousand dollars a year. Mm, I think, or less. Mm -hmm. Or less, which puts you at the poverty level. Yeah, of course. So, mm -hmm. so I know you love your kid. Oh yeah, but, I love would, my son. but he, wouldn't I, you have loved your son uh, in, in a better way by having him with a responsible dad? Yes, definitely. You know, I'm so tired of hearing about deadbeat dads and mm -hmm. dads who but cheat. That's our fault. That's our girl's fault. Because, well, like you said, we see all these signs, and we're just. We just think like... Well, because, by the way, it goes back to a thing I say all the time. Women get really mad at me for saying it. Mm -hmm. I say, treat women like crap, and they come back for more. <laughs> so true. <laughs> but this is why these things happen. We like, I mean, I don't know. I don't think... I think girls, we do like a, like the challenge. We like guys. We don't like guys to be so... Could I say a P word? No. You don't no. want them to be pussies. Yeah, yeah, like but yeah, they, you want them to have a strong attitude. Yeah, but also. you see, here's the. But you see, darling, well, not like treat us. Yeah, that's true. There's such a thing as, for example, I'm an a hole, mm -hmm. but I'm a responsible a hole. Yes. I pay the bills. Mm -hmm. I never have to borrow somebody's car. Mm -hmm. I never have to borrow their bus pass. Mm -hmm. I never borrow money from people because I don't have to yeah. because I'm a strong individual. Yeah. So I'm an a hole. But I'm a strong and responsible man, mm -hmm. not a loser. Yeah. So you see, you can have a guy who has an attitude. Yeah, I like guys with attitude. But they got to be able to pay the rent. Mm -hmm. And if they can't, they're losers. And you shouldn't be having babies with people like that. Okay. Okay. The reason there's deadbeat dads, I wish I could just bleep out the one word and I'm, I'm going to just uh, abbreviate here. The reason there are deadbeat dads is because women like you F deadbeats. That's why there's deadbeat dads. Yeah. If you would stop effing deadbeats, there wouldn't be any deadbeat dads. Mm -hmm. And you can tell who the deadbeats are. Mm -hmm. When the man asks you for the keys to your car. Yeah. Loser. Yeah. 
And by the way, I did his resume. I I helped him to get in the company. You know, he can't do that on his own. Mm, I guess no. I mean, I don't know. But but if you saw that, I know. What made you think to yourself this guy would make a great dad? Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's why I'm mad at myself. But then it's already. Well, I'm not trying to beat you up here. In fact, no, 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 the reason okay. I'm doing this no. is because there's other women like you who are two years earlier than you right now. Mm-hmm. I love my boy. Sure, he's a cholo, but I it's love him. Yeah, no, no. Love doesn't pay. Yes, he beats me, but it's only once a